Are you a Vikings fan? Well, if you are, then we know you're going to want to hear everything there is to know about Valhalla Season 2. And we have that for you. When it comes to Vikings, you need to know the facts, such as the Season 2 release date, who will make up the cast, and what the plot will be. So grab a seat and relax, because we're about to get started. Let's start with when will Season 2 be released? The second season has already been filmed, and it's done. Apparently, it wrapped on November 2nd, 2021. However, even though we are all all very excited. The second season is currently in the editing phase, so we still have to wait for it to be released. What does this all mean for the release date? Well, there isn't an official release date yet. We do know that it will most likely be released in either late 2022 or early 2023. However, we do think that it will most likely be released in 2023. Also, there should be an announcement on June 6th, so we will need to wait, but it's coming around soon. Hopefully, they will tell us when they will be releasing the next season then because it would really be helpful to clear up some answers. When do you think the second season will be released? Do you think it'll be next year? Now, let's move on to the cast. There are a few cast members that we know who will be returning for the second season. We know that Sam Corlett, who plays Leaf, Leo Suter, who plays Harold, Frida Gustafsson, who plays Freitas, Laura Berlin, who plays Emma of Normandy, David Oakes, who plays Godwin, and Johannes Halker Johannesson, who plays Olaf, will be returning. On top of this, we know that Soren Pilmark, who plays Forkbeard, Bradley Freegard, who plays Canute, and Pollyanna McIntosh, who plays Elfgefew, will also be returning to the show for the second season. As for new arrivals onto set, we now know that Florian Montianu will be appearing. Montianu was Razor Fist in Shang-Chi and will now be playing Maniax, who is a Byzantine general. Wow, that's a pretty cool role. However, we do know that Caroline Henderson, who plays Hakan, will not be joining the cast for the second season. That is is because she met her ending during the final episode of the first season. To counter that, Henderson did do an interview and she said that no one really knows if her character will be making a return. Apparently, there is always a possibility for her to return as a ghost or something else. Jeb Stewart has also said that this second season will give a very different spotlight for Olaf. We can also expect Magnus, his son, to also turn up down the line in later seasons. However, we also know that Eric the Red might be popping up, but we just don't know when. There were so many characters that we know are returning and so many that aren't, but we definitely don't know anything else. There are always so many questions left unanswered when it comes to this show. Well, who do you think is going to be appearing as a ghost in the future? Do you think there will be some flashbacks? Speaking of flashbacks, what is going to happen in the second season? Stewart had a conversation with Games Radar Plus, and he said that we won't be returning to Kattegat for the second season. That might be a bit of a disappointment for some, but is a good thing. Apparently, there is some trouble and strife coming to the port in big ways, so we are going to need to sit and wait to find out what kind of trouble it is going to be. I mean, at the end of the first season, we saw many different things being scattered when it came to Scandinavia and Europe for the hunt for glory. There were also a lot of shifts in the power dynamics. Kattegat had a new ruler for five seconds, and then all that came to a quick end. Olaf was also in charge until he saw the fleet of Forkbeard docking. That would scar anyone, I think. Also, we know that Hakon is gone, so there is going to be a power vacuum appearing. There are going to be a lot of wars over Kattegat's new leader. We do know that it most likely will not be Harold, since he is on and off again with Freitas, and they just escaped Kattegat with their lives. I definitely wouldn't be trying to fight to become leader there. Also, he is public enemy number one in a lot of Vikings' eyes since he sided with Kara. Also, Freitas needs to now deal with being the last and a potential savior of the Viking people. Then, if we go over to England, Emma has come back to the throne. She's currently a loyal ally in Godwin, which is helping to keep out any attempts of payback. However, Mercia seems to be more and more of a threat, and who really knows how long this is all going to keep up. Do you think all of this was going to be covered in the second season? Also, keep watching because we have some more news on the show for you. The other thing about the plot is Leaf. There are going to be some major changes in the second season when it comes to Leaf. In the writer's room, he's being called Old Testament Leaf. This means that he is going to be moving similarly to his father, Eric the Red. Stewart wants the audience to see a different leaf compared to what we saw in the first season. This new leaf is going to be driven and will be pulling his father out of every part of him. With this comes his traveling exploits that he's going to be taking part 
president, Leif is best known for setting sail and finding North America. In the future seasons, he's going to be equipped to make that journey, which also means that he might be going a bit further than that, and there will be more characters to introduce in the show. Stewart is being very practical about this, because even though he knows that Leif needs to make this journey, he doesn't have everything he needs in his toolbox. He can't just make that journey because he's feeling brave at that moment. The reason is that if he only used his bravery to get that far, then the Vikings would have discovered North America a long time ago. But they didn't. Stewart is trying to work out what he would have needed to make that journey. He really wants to blow the audience out of the water with these characters because he will also be making them more adult. That means that they will all need to earn their way there, and that can only happen with experience. In the second season, we can see slower scenes that are really capturing the characters in different ways. Stewart has said that he liked the fast pace of the first season, but some of his favorite scenes were when he could limit the number of characters and explore different orbits with them. Well, he might be getting more of that ready for us in the second season, but we will have to wait and see. Are you okay with things moving a bit slower, or do you like the fast-paced world of Vikings? Finally, will it stay historically accurate? One of the best things about Vikings is the fact that the creators have tried their best to keep everything historically accurate. Just like Vikings, Valhalla is using both facts and fiction to make up the story and the world. The first season did get some backlash for not being completely accurate, however. Jeb came forward and did admit that there were some challenges when it came to creating a historically accurate drama for Netflix. Michael Hurst wrote the entire first series by himself, but Jeb was joined by a team of writers to write the second season. Jeb did come forward before the release and admitted that he found some aspects of the research hard when it came to creating the script. He said that there are a million different ways to look at history, and even though they did a lot of research, they came across a ton of stuff. He needed to really decide what needed to be shown. It took him three years to get this show penned down and ready to go. I mean, that is a lot of time on a show. The showrunner and the writers did do their best to go over the history of Leif Erikson so it is as accurate as it could be. However, a lot of the history of the Vikings was never written down. He said that they don't know a whole lot about the original Vikings because they didn't have a written language. This has made it difficult for them to figure out what to put in. Also, they were working with stories and poems of what happened hundreds of years later, and archaeologists are continuously finding new stuff about the Vikings all the time. Wow, when you think about it like that, it is no wonder why it is not completely historically accurate, because they are trying to piece everything together, but they still need to make it interesting for viewers. Are you upset by the historical inaccuracies? Well, that's all we have for you. Are you excited for the next season? Do you think the plot will be amazing? Let us know what you think down below.